got you already ready to go. Awesome. It's 6.30, isn't it? I should be starting. Yeah, cool. It's 6.30, right? How are you? Let's go. Let's go. Should we Should we get started? Everyone's ready? Yeah. Comfortable? Yeah? All right. Let's do it, Brett. Let's do it. Cool. How's everybody? You guys all good? Yeah? Thanks for making it down. I drove a really far distance today from Miami to get here. And it's, uh, it was actually a dream come true just to be able to get in the car and come on down, have a seminar, put it on and, and be here with you guys. So came a whopping 15 minutes to be here. I think Michelle, you came further than me today. North Lakes, nice, nice. So it's a really pleasure to be here. And so thanks for uh, making some time and coming down. Who's excited about learning some stuff about creation today? Yeah, manifesting, magnetizing what you want. Let me ask you, who came today because they would like to make some more money? The universe is listening, by the way. Those of you who don't have your hands up. <laughs> who came because they wanted to get a bit more freedom in life? Like they want to be able to, yeah, nice. And, and there's some people here that have been really pushing it, wanting to create something, and they, they want to understand how can they create, how can they actually make things. Who's in that sort of realm as well? Yeah, nice. And who came here because they just want to see what I have so they can use it for their clients? Yes, there's always a couple. There's always a couple. It seems like my mic's a bit off. But I'm really, really blessed and excited to be here, guys. And I just wanted to, to say welcome. Welcome. It's, uh, it's going to be fun. When, when I started out on the, the I guess, the, the journey, I always said when I got to the end or I got to a place, I would like to come back and to give back. So this is a total manifestation and a dream for me. So... Thanks for all being here because some of the stuff I've got to share with you is really, really revolutionary. Really. Like, it really is. I've been obsessed about this, traveling the world, spending time with billionaires, spending time understanding how do you create, how do you use your mindset, how do you actually really get this stuff to work. And what I've got is something that's very, very different and very unique because I couldn't find it for a very long time. So I'm really excited. So today I want to talk to you about how to magically manifest more money which is just one thing because the process for creating more money is the same as creating everything. Who agrees with that? Show of hands. It's the same process. This is just one of the easiest things to measure. Does that make sense? It's the same process, whatever it is you want to create. So I'm going to use that as our metaphor today to understand creation, to understand how to consciously create rather than unconsciously create. So it's going to be a very cool journey. In fact, I want to get straight into it. I want to show you today the science and techniques you must understand to change your attraction point. How many of you have heard of this old law of attraction that's been going around since the secret came out? Today I want to show you how that is missing the point massively, but then how the others that are trying to say other ways is also missing as well. There's something very special when you understand alchemy and you understand how to turn the invisible into the visible. It will totally change the game for you, I promise. Tonight's going to be awesome. So we're going to go for about an, an hour and a half. So it's, uh, it's 6.30 now. We'll go through to about 8 and then there'll be a break at about 8. And then we'll come back and finish up at about 9 p.m. Is that okay with everyone? So if you really have to go to the bathroom or something, you can. But if you can wait, know that there's going to be a break at 8 p.m. Is that cool? Awesome. So let's get right into it. I also want to show you something that no one talks about and it's structural tension. Let's see how switched on you guys are. What happens with tension? When you create tension, what happens? Tension seeks what? Resolution. What's that? Resolution. resolution. And that's the first thing I want you to write down. Tension seeks resolution. This is a universal law. You can see it right in front of you with these elastic bands. It's a universal law. True? Tension will seek resolution. It's a very important and simple concept. Tension will seek resolution. Most of you will find, surprisingly, that the tension that is seeking resolution in your life is actually not going towards what it is you want. And that is why it's been so hard to create or to manifest or to achieve what you want. Because when you have the structure in place, 
that's when it can actually unfold. Can I go straight into this? Are you guys alright with that? Yeah. See, if I have if I have a beach ball versus I have a skyscraper. Two different structures, would you agree? Completely different structures, right? If I just flick the beach ball, what happens? It moves, yes? Does it move? Yeah. But if I push as hard as I want on the side of this building, is it going to move? Of course not. See, a lot of us have structures in our life that are just not moving. Who's with me? Who's faced this before? And you push it, and you might it, and you push it, and you force it, and you push it, and guess what happens? Nothing. Nothing. But you manifest it, right? You, you pray, you have oracle cards, you go healing, you go have ayahuasca, you do all these things, you keep on going and going. Still, it doesn't move, true? So you go to NLP and EFT, you get a reading, right? You're a vegetarian for a while, then you go keto, then you try this, and then you try this, and it's still not moving. <laughs> You try hypnosis, read a personal development book, the new one over here by biohacking. This one over here says, you know, you are the placebo, you're the one that's going to change it, but you keep pushing. You keep pushing it, right? And you keep pushing it and you're wondering, why is it not moving? Why is it not moving? True? And so today I want to show you something that took me so long to realize and understand and uncover. It's been a lifelong journey to understand that tension is going to seek resolution if you have the tension structures set up in the right way. Does that make sense? Because it shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be hard. It's not hard for the artist to paint. It's not hard for the dog to be a dog. It's not hard for us to sit here and breathe and be, is it? Yet when we try to create something that's not us, what happens? It feels like we're pushing against something that is pushing back. Show of hands who's starting to see this already. Does this make sense? Yeah. I'm going to ask you guys to be with me tonight. Is that okay? Yeah. To, to play full out and to be an interactive audience. It's, there's no ego up here. Just raise your hand if you've got a question. Is that cool? Yeah. And, and I want to say that right away. Uh, I know. I know. I know. I'm not as experienced as you. Haven't been on this planet as long as most of you. I know that you are better parents than me, probably better grandparents, you know a heck of a lot more about health or all sorts of different things, true? You all know a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. And, I, and I, one thing I want to let you know is I'm not going to try to be up here and to be a know-it-all. What I've been able to do though is to create a very successful business and a life that I'm really proud of. And I just want to share with you stuff that works for me. Is that fine? And all you can do is you're here to learn from me. You can put your hand up, ask questions. You can agree or disagree. It doesn't bother me at all. Is that okay? My question is, is you're here for the next hour and a half to two hours. Is it okay to play flat and try my way on? Yep. Is that okay? Because yes. that'd be nice. That'd be nice. So I want to let you know, like, there's no, I'm not going to try to tell you if you decide that it's not for you, totally cool, shake your hand, whatever. It's absolutely fine. I also will be talking to you about how you can carry on working with me and doing different things, but it'll only be for a select few of you that, that say you want to have a chat. Okay, so we'll do that at the end. Sound good? I want to let you, you let you know that those who do say, hey Chris, I'd like to talk to you more about your workshops or your, your masterminds, you guys will be allowed to stay around and hear more about them. But if you don't want to hear about them, then you'll simply shake my hand and you'll say, no worries, and I'll say, have a good night. Sound good? Yeah. I want you to know there's no, not going to be a surprise pitch coming out of nowhere for you. <laughs> right? As a few of you just went, oh, thank God. <laughs> True, but I will offer something to those who do want to hear it. Is that fair? Before I get there, I'll add a lot of value. We'll be here, we'll talk, we'll discuss, we'll laugh, those sort of things. Does that sound good with everyone? Is everyone okay with that? Yep. Yes. Awesome. So I want to make sure that you, you understand a few real simple things. Is it true that gravity exists? Yes? Gravity exists. Who's with me? Yep. Yes. It does. Now, just because it exists, I was in Melbourne last week and I flew here. Gravity exists, but it was superseded by what? Lift. Lift. So the law of lift is bigger than the law of gravity. It supersedes it. Is that true? Because there's still gravity, but then lift works. So here's what we try to do, is we're always trying to find black or white. Is it this or is it that? We want it to be binary. But it's true that one law can exist and another one can supersede it. Does that make sense? Because isn't it true? that the law of hard work works, right? If you don't put an effort, nothing's going to be returned to you, right? 
If you don't plant the seeds, your garden's not going to grow, no matter how much you sit there and pray that it's going to grow with the seeds sitting on your shelf. Is it true? You've got to do something. Who's with me? But it's superseded by something else. So it exists, but there's something bigger. That something bigger is what I want to talk about today. Is that okay? There's something bigger. Because if it was just hard work, if it was just hard work, wouldn't you know more people that were living their dreams? Isn't it true? Wouldn't you know? Wouldn't every African woman who's working her butt off, walking miles to feed her kids, wouldn't she have a heck of a lot more if it was just hard work? It can't be, can it? So today's about exploring some universal laws about creating what you want, and it won't be what you hear other places, because if there was other people teaching it, I'd let them do it. It's very exciting for me to be able to do this. It's for you if you're an aspirational business person. Who is that, by the way? Who are the aspirational business people in here who would like to create something? Show of hands. Who's thinking, you know, I'd like to create something, I'd like to do something? It's really for you, but it's also for you if you just want to get out there and to create some extra change in your life. So I know a lot of you don't know me at all. Is that fair to say? First thing you did is you saw some red-headed dude on Facebook, you clicked on that or a friend told you about it, you thought, oh, that's interesting and now you're here. So can I introduce myself a little bit so you know who I am before we get right into it? Is that okay? Yeah. Awesome. So look, I'm a two times best-selling author. I've actually written four books, but only two of them got bestsellers. Uh, Manifest the Love of My Life, that's Harriet, wherever she is. That's my wife out, outside somewhere. Uh, so she's amazing. I'm super lucky to meet her. Uh, lived and worked from dozens of countries, spoken to over 100,000 people. It still blows my mind. I'm from Wellington, New Zealand. Have we got any Kiwis here? Kia ora Kiwis, good to see you. So I'm from, I'm from New Zealand originally and uh, it's funny because now in my live audiences, this is one of the smallest ones that we do, over 100,000 people. Blows me away to, to be able to say that. I'm a first generation millionaire. Which means that, yeah, thanks. I wasn't expecting that, but thanks. It means that, you know, my, my parents and grandparents, they didn't, they didn't sit around with heaps of money. I'm the one that's done it. And I reckon that in every single family line, there's one that's going to do it. And that's going to get them across the line. And I'm bloody grateful to say it was me. I've lived a life of freedom, doing what matters most. And my digital marketing company, that's my main company. Okay, we do digital marketing. This isn't, this isn't what I do. It does about $5 million a year. And I'm, I'm grateful to have that as well. But the truth is, really, I did not grow up this way. I grew up middle class, house full of love. I would never at one, one moment ever say that my parents didn't give me everything that I needed. But the one thing they didn't know was money. They didn't know how to create. The only thing that they knew was to push and work, right? Push and work. Who's with me? Push and work. Work, work, work. Do more, do more, do more, do more. And uh, I watched them struggle and I decided it wasn't going to be for me. But I followed that same path, got myself stuck in a job, going around that exact same treadmill. Even though I promised myself I wouldn't, that I'd create the life of my dreams, all these things, I found myself just going around and around and around. I was reading the books, I was searching, I was looking. And, and the truth is, is because I didn't have anybody around that was actually able to create and do something big, I actually had no idea where to start. I had no idea. And uh, today I'm going to be going completely all in with you, sharing what some very, very successful people have shared with me and uh, what's really worked for me. But my question to all you guys, are you going to go all in today as well? Because the truth is, is it doesn't actually matter how much I, w I used to say this at this point, you say it takes two hands to clap, but then some smart ass the other day sat there going like this, <laughs> going, no it doesn't, but it does take two hands to clap properly, doesn't it? And so, you know, I'm going to go all in and I appreciate that you guys did as well. So have you ever wondered this question? Let me ask you, have you ever wondered why do some people succeed and some people don't? Ever wondered that? Even people that live in the same street, grow up in the same house, have the same parents, some succeed, some don't. Have you ever thought to yourself, only I could just have more money, then I'll be able to do this, then I'll be able to do that. Has anyone thought about that before? Show of hands. <laughs> if only I could do that, right? So here's my question for you guys, and I want this to be real. I want you to go all in with me. I'm here with you. Is why? Why do you not have everything you desire? And I don't want you to shout it out because it's probably going to be quite private, but why? What's your story? 
Not smart enough, not good looking enough. That was my story. Not this, not that. Why? Because it's just not true. It's just not true that you haven't had the opportunity. And it's just not true that you haven't been in the right position or in the right place. It's just not true. There's something that you haven't discovered in you. And that's a really important thing to decide. To go, you know what, I'm going to be the one that's got to change and find this. And the next question is, why do you not have the money? What's the reason? What's the reason? Because a lot of people don't actually know the reason. So today, at the beginning, I really want to highlight some reasons why. See, sometimes we're setting up a structure. By the way, do you guys like that I just got straight into it today? Is that good? Yeah. No messing around? Yeah. Just, just you and me just liked it different like that? <laughs> Everyone else was like, no, please muck around. Please waste my time, Chris. <laughs> See, sometimes we think that the reason why it's not manifesting, we need to have a bigger this, a bigger goal. We need to do this. But a lot of times we don't know why this one's not moving. True, and this is you, your current reality. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I want to really help you understand why this one's not moving. So the first question, are you a number one? Have you had the same income for years? It's the same one. And no matter what you do, you just don't seem to make it get any bigger. You've changed jobs, done different things. Anyone a number one? Yeah. Three, yep, that's you. Good. Who's this? You've made more money, but somehow you always end up back where you started. Who's that? Who's number two? That's you as well? Am I going to be all of them? I hope not. <laughs> number three, uh, when you get more money, do you keep the money or do you feel the need to spend it? Like right now, if I just handed you 10 grand, would you already have calculated where, where it's going? Who's that? Show of hands. Who's that? I'm going to be all of them. <laughs> It's true, right? You're already going, well, if I got 10 grand, I'd put it here and here and here. It's gone straight away. It won't stick to you. Well, what about this one? If someone handed you a million dollars in a box right now, for no reason, no reason, here's a million bucks, and they had no reason, you didn't work for it, they just wanted to give it to you, what would you think? What do they want? Just think about it, because the universe wants to give it to you. What do you say? I'd give them a hug. Give them a big hug. And then they give you another million? And then another million? Who had a negative or a weird response to that one? Nice. So that's interesting. And so being a number four, having that, is you're blocking receiving. You're blocking receiving, you see? You say, I couldn't just get it for not doing anything, right? The next one, do you go to program after program, business after business, and they don't seem to work? Is anyone that one? Yeah, a couple of you. What about, what about if you got really freaking successful? Like, really successful, like Oprah successful. And then, you go back to you know your family gathering maybe it's christmas or a birthday or something like that how do you feel walking in being the most successful person in the country does it feel good or do you start wondering what other people think who's got that interesting right now it's not just about money i'm using money as an example but it's the same with relationships it's the same with all sorts of things same with health because the way you do anything is the way you do everything. what is it everything everything you can't separate you from it so the last one are you living for someone else's success are you not actually doing what's true for you are you not doing what's true for you see the reason why I want to talk about this is most of us, the problem is our emotional vibration. Write this down. You cannot plant seeds of scarcity and grow abundance. You cannot grow seeds of scarcity and grow abundance. Is it true? How could that ever happen? Here's what happens is our mind is the most fertile place on the planet. Whatever you plant in your mind will grow. Here's what a lot of people do. They literally spend their current reality day to day and they're in scarcity. They're going around saying, I don't have enough. And so guess what happens? 
They're going around in scarcity. They're going around in doubt. What are they doing? They're planting seeds of scarcity and planting seeds of doubt. True? And guess what happens if you plant seeds of scarcity and doubt for 20 years, 15 years, 30 years, 40 years, what happens? This becomes your identity. This becomes you. True? So check this out. This is why most people can't manifest because their structure isn't right. Is they say, when I get, when I get the money, when I get the money, then I will feel what? What will you feel when you get the money? Shout it out. What will you feel? Happy. Happy. What else? Worthy. Worthy. What else? Safe. Safe. What else? Satisfied. Satisfied. What else? Choices. You have choices. What else? Freedom. Freedom. What's that? Enough. Enough. So we have all of these other feelings here. So check this out. Your ego has based its safety on being this person. Would you agree with that? So then you're saying to your brain, which wants you to stay alive, right? That you've been alive being this way. I want to go get this money and then I'm going to be completely different. It can never do it. Show of hands who gets that straight away. Show of hands who gets it. It can never do it. It can never be that because then it would have to die. The part of you that's going, I don't have enough, I'm not this, I'm not that, would actually have to die. So what does it do? It makes sure it never actually gets the money because you've set it up that the money is going to change you. Right? And so it doesn't matter how much you sit back here going, oh my God, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, I'm rich, as you do whatever it is, the power of hour or whatever the guy talks about. Right? It doesn't matter how many tapes or how many healers or how many trips to Bali on Vision Quest you go to or whatever, what's, what's everyone talking to me about? Ayahuasca or whatever the crap it is. It doesn't matter how many of these things you go and do. True? Because the identity will never allow itself to die. So it will never go over here because guess what you've created? Guess what you've created? A structure that is immovable. Is it true? Yeah. Anyone disagree? No. So a lot of people set this up. They say more money is going to create freedom and abundance. A better relationship is going to create connection and support and love. But the truth is, they feel the opposite of that in day to day. They're actually incomplete. They're saying when I get a relationship, then I'll feel love. But they can't ever have it because I'd have to change. Make sense? So let me ask you, where does the change happen? Do you get the thing and then you miraculously change? Or do you have to make the change now? Change now. It has to happen here. So this has to become this. You have to find it now, because check this out. Which way is the faster thing? Right now, is it faster for you to make more money or feel freedom and abundance? Which one? Is it faster to go get that relationship or feel connection, support, and love? It's the feeling. The fast track, the fast way is the feeling. You see? We find a way to get into this. Then you're in a new identity which allows you to have the success. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. If you don't get in the feeling first, which is counterintuitive, isn't it? Yeah. Right? We all get told when I make the money, then you'll be free. Right, how's your life going to be different when you hit this goal? It won't. It won't. It won't. This is why we see so many successful people who decide to end their life. Because they spent time, keep thinking, the more I get, the more success, the more fame, the better movie, the better my music is, then I'll finally get this feeling. But they can never have the feeling because that's their identity. It's the saddest thing that's happening right now and it's an epidemic. We've literally set this world up in this way. And you guys are going to change that. Who's with me? You have to get in the feeling now so that you're actually safe to have the result that you desire. True? But Chris, if I already feel the feeling, how would I be motivated? It's coming up. So I started a business and failed. In fact, that's where I started. And I love putting this picture up here. 
because that's where I started real dreadlocks, working in a bar, not really knowing what to do. And I found a mentor, he taught me about creating success. He had a $3 million business and at that time I thought, wow, that's a heck of a lot of money. It was sure a lot more than I think both my parents ever made in their lifetime. And I thought it was a lot. And so he started mentoring me and the first thing he told me was a metaphor about Joe and Bob. And I want to tell it to you because it changed my life. So I want to take you back to ancient times for a while. Two men, Joe and Bob, were tasked with this one very important task which was to walk to the lake and get the water for the city. They were given it above everyone else. So Joe and Bob, they walked, they went and did it. On the first day, they could bring back a hundred buckets each. Same on the second day, the third day. Everyone was so happy, so the city decided that they would pay a dollar per bucket of water. And what happened was, very quickly Bob started to realize that he wasn't going to be able to keep this going forever. So he started telling his wife and he started telling Joe, you know, hey, I think, you know, I think there's, there's got to be a better way. What did they say? Stop complaining. We're so privileged. His wife had all the nice new jewels, new silk, beautiful, nice houses, the best camels. They had everything. They had everything. And so he kept on doing it. But there was something inside of him that just knew there had to be a better way. There had to be a better way. So he starts thinking. He takes time out of actually carrying the buckets. But everyone thinks he's lost his mind. In fact, the city and everyone start really, really getting down on him. Say, how dare you? You're supposed to be doing this job. We gave you this job. We taught it to you. And here you are wasting your day doing what? Thinking. So Bob got put down and Joe got raised up. Joe had all the money. Everyone was so grateful. You're not like that bad Bob guy. And then all of a sudden, Bob took it down even more. And he started digging. And he started digging. Six months went by and Joe, who'd been carrying the buckets the whole time, started to get sore hands, bad back. And his capacity started to go down. And Bob just kept on digging. His wife's about to leave him. The town's telling him he's terrible. Everyone thinks he's selfish. He's not looking after it. And then finally, after a year, the final shovel was dug. And on that day, his pipeline poured a thousand buckets of water into the city and he got paid a thousand dollars. So in one day he made 10 days back. Within two days, 20 days. <coughs> Within his first month he was making far more money than he ever could have made carrying buckets. See, when I heard that, I went, I get it. It doesn't matter how much that, that I actually do with my time, I'm always going to just be carrying those buckets. True? Yep. So I want you to write this down. You must create things that do the work for you. You must create systems that do the work for you. I realized really quickly what I had to do. I had to build my system. I had to build my trench. It became so clear of what I had to do. But I was so full of fear. And I thought to myself, what if I failed? Has anyone ever thought about starting something, investing in something, doing something, and then you've thought to yourself, but what if I fail? It's a really important human mechanism, so I hope you all did that. Here's my logic. You ready for it? I'm stuck over here not living the life I want. If I go and try, and then I fail, where do I end up? back here. We're so lucky to live in this country. We're so lucky to live in my home country, New Zealand. We're lucky. The worst we can get is someone else pays for our meals for a while. Like we literally have a soft landing pad. True? Yes. Yeah. We're bloody lucky and other countries not like that. If you're not going after your dreams in this country, it's definitely in here. Is that true? Yeah. It's massively true. Massively true. And so I went for it. And, I, and, and what happened was results were so slow because I didn't have the structures in place. Your results will be slow at the beginning, but it was like a war. Who's felt the war? Like one day I'm full, I'm excited, I'm hopeful, I'm going for it, I'm confident. Then the next day, what? Doubt and scare and all these other things. Who's ever felt the, the internal conflict? Should I be doing this? Same for me. 
There's a story of these monkeys. Most of you would have heard it. Five monkeys were put in a cage. They, scientists opened up the top of the cage and they put fruit there. They put a pole or a ladder or some sort of climbing device that allowed the monkeys to climb and get the food. As soon as they went to climb, they sprayed all the monkeys with ice cold water. Scientists say. Eh? They are evil. But here's where their evilness is going to help you today. So what happened was, is the monkeys started beating on any monkey that would go close to that pole, close to that ladder to get the food. And so eventually no monkey would touch the ladder. They could leave it open. They could put whatever they want up there. No monkey would climb the ladder because they don't want to be frozen with cold water. So then they did something interesting. They took one of the monkeys out. They replaced it with a new monkey. They never sprayed water again. What do you think this monkey did as soon as they put food at the top of the ladder? What is it? Went to climb. What do you think all the other monkeys did? Tried to stop him. Stopped him, yelled at him, clawed, pulled it down. So they replaced another one. They never sprayed the water. What do you think this new one did? Now the, the first monkey that got introduced that never got sprayed, it joined in on the beating. It said, well, I got beaten up for climbing this thing. Don't do that. I'm going get, to get my own back. Then they replaced all the monkeys and this is amazing they replaced all five never sprayed with cold water food at the top of a ladder I think it was a pole actually what do you think happened they all, didn't go. They all, fought, each other. They all fought each other then all those monkeys had babies so now it's children of monkeys who never got sprayed with the cold water and guess what? Scientists could put whatever food they wanted at the top. The monkeys could be as hungry as they liked. They would never climb that. And if anyone dared touch it, they would hit on it. They probably, if you asked one of the monkeys, they'd say, well, it's a curse. Our ancestors told us, never climb this ladder. It's just what we do here. We don't climb that ladder around here. Are you crazy? Interesting, isn't it? Because you think about some of the things that we do and you wonder why. You wonder why, because we're that generation. Right? Yeah. We don't know. One of the things, I, I lived in Austin, Texas for a while. You ready for this, Australians? In Austin, Texas, they have no income tax. No, it's true. There's, no, like, uh, there's someone going, well, how does it even, how do they pay for their libraries? But it's true. In Texas, there's no income tax. Now, I, we could talk about a lot of different things that you find as you travel, right? But isn't that interesting? And so you've got to start asking and looking. And, and when I heard that, I went, you know what? I know it's me, right? I'm like, I know it's me. I know it's me because there are people less talented than me having more success than me. I know it's me. So I went on this huge journey and I started just learning everything I could. Everything I could. I got certified twice in things if I needed to. I went for it. Who's with me on this? They just went for it learning a bunch of stuff. And I found out some of it worked, some didn't. But the thing that I realized is the fastest way to get to where I want is to find people that were already there. And what happened is I would overtake them. I would overtake them and overtake this person and this lady and this person and I'll keep finding the next person. It became an obsession. I went all in and I was gonna just create a hundred grand at the time. And I got told this and I want you to get this. It's big. Who's learning stuff today, by the way? Yeah. All your beliefs that stop you are unconscious. Why? Why are they all unconscious? What's that? Because you inherited them? Because those are lessons that were reinforced. Learned behavior. Learned behavior. Here's why. If it was freaking conscious, you would have already changed it. What does unconscious mean? It means you don't know about them. It's your automated program. The thing right now that's helping you to breathe, right, is the same thing that got coded up on what was safe in your family. What was safe in your family of monkeys. True? Yes. True? Yes. And that's actually what I realized. There was so much more things that were stopping me. And, and I realized that all things are created twice. Everything's first created in your mind, and then it's created in reality. 
but we don't have control over most of it, it's automatic. And so then I went on that huge journey and I realized for everyone the missing piece is structural tension and no one's talking about this. I read this little known book called The Path of Least Resistance by Robert Fritz and you should write that down because he's freaking amazing. He wrote this book in the late 80s called The Path of Least Resistance. It is the backbone of every single personal development person out there but they never teach it. They never teach it. They never teach that if its structure's not moving that you can't just fight the structure. You need a new structure. And I'm gonna to explain to that to you so you get it today. I found my sabotage pattern, stopped reinforcing it, took massive action, and I won. I won. The reason why I won is I changed the structure. Does that make sense? You should be able to easily create and manifest everything you want. It should not be hard. You should be able to have it. It's your structures, your beliefs, your thoughts that are stopping you. Yes? So you're saying that you can change the structure of your DNA or the pattern of your DNA? The question is, am I talking about the structure of changing DNA? No. You'll understand structure by the end of today and exactly what I mean. And we're about to go deep right off the side of the cliff with it. So hold that question. Hold that question. The structure is a time-space structure. So I'm right here in time and space. And now I'm here. That is the same as your dreams. That was easy. You see? That's as easy as it should be to move from one time-space to another. The other two structures. That's what you're going to learn today. I won and then I lost. I won and then I lost. This, this is my first mentor, the one that had the three million dollar business. My best friend, his name was Mark Deason. There's me and him speaking on video together about five years ago. There's us in Bali shooting another video. There's me as a lion and him looking at me and then the top right is our last photo together. He's the one in the box. Because on the 3rd of March 2016, he was in Bali and a truck went across the middle line and took him out. Wearing a helmet, wasn't speeding. No reason to die at 42 like that. <laughs> and everything was, he was my first mentor and then he became my business partner. We had a four and a half million dollar business together, 48 staff. And like that, I was in debt without my guy, without my best friend, without my mentor going. And it was big. The gift he gave me is the gift I'm giving you. Because what it made me do was have to prove everything that I'm teaching. Three years ago, I went from four and a half million dollars to 360 grand in debt and I'll let you know his family didn't fucking suffer the no one in our business didn't get paid I kicked butt because of what I'm going to teach you today they can take it all away from you but if you have the right structure you can create anything you want here's what I did I want you to take note of this the first thing is I got a clear contribution based vision you must have a vision of how you're going to serve the world. The world will only give back to you what you give to it. So I said, you know what, I'm going to change lives, I'm going to serve, I'm going to be passionate, I'm going to be excited, I'm going to contribute to everyone. And the universe would reflect that and I knew it, that's the first step. The second is I must have an aligned mind and live in the emotion of the end result. I had to live in the emotion of the end result. I didn't have time to cry about it. I didn't have time to be upset. I had to be in the emotion of the end result. Abundance, joy, love, this. Because that wasn't going to create. I then had to understand structural tension and take the right action. 
Every day I had to reinforce this with a morning meditation and a visualization. And lastly, I needed mentorship. Because no one will teach you this and you'll get off track. You have to stay in the right tension, the emotion of the end result with an aligned mind of exactly where you want to go. And then every day you must create this tension so that it seeks resolution to exactly where you want to get to. I promise you a simple rubber band will give you everything you need to understand about creating and why you're not. In one year, well actually in the first nine months we did a million dollars. In 12 months we did 2.1 and three years later we got to five million. Brand new business. The big thing about that is you all go, oh but Chris you already had this, you already had that. No I didn't. I got sued by a lot of people that I couldn't deliver to. He had all the skills, every, it was not like, it was way hard. But when you get everything together, you can move quick. And then I met a billionaire and this is why I'm here. He literally jaw hit the ground when he heard the story I just told you. And he told me, I need you to speak to my friends. He said, I need you to speak to my friends because this billionaire, he goes, it's all vibration, thinking, and manifestation. And it literally knocked me over. When I'm sitting in a room of billionaires in Austin, Texas, self-made, and they all look at me and go, it's all vibration. That's it. That's what Nikola Tesla said, it's all vibration. It's all energy. And I got it. I got it. All of us that are striving to get there, Who's striving to get there, by the way? That striving to get there is actually creating a ripple that you're not it. It is why you can't ever get it. The billionaires, they weren't doing that. They were there. They were it. And I got this feeling that if it was all taken away, that would be it still. And it would find them again. Not because of some woo-woo law of attraction stuff, but because they're it. Write this down. When you be it, you will see it. When you be it, when you be it, you must be in your future feeling now. You must be in the future feeling now. This statement is the one statement that will change your life more than anything but your brain will likely not be able to understand it i am truly satisfied with everything i have now and i want more i am truly satisfied with everything i have now and i want more who struggles with that statement Seriously, who struggles with that statement? Me. Why? Because I'm in a rut. Because you're in a rut, yeah. I'm not where I want to be, right? That's what that means. I'm not where I want to be. And so the truth is, you've got to find it now to then be able to have it. You must find a way to be truly sad. Yes, it's good for you to say, Chris, five million bucks, you prick. <laughs> I hear you. But when you truly can be satisfied now, that's when you're in the vibration. So then you could actually accept what's to come. Does that make sense? But Chris, if I already felt satisfied now, well, how could I take action? Wouldn't that action just collapse that feeling? You must let go of trying to get somewhere or away from something and be it. Come from choice. One of the big mistakes people make is they're problem solvers. They're problem solvers. That's not creation. That's not how it works. Who's got questions on this? I feel like I, I, I really get the energy of that statement the creativeness of it, and I oscillate in and out of it. Oscillation's key. Yep. Like when, I, when I feel that, when I feel that, I feel that. 
here's why you oscillate. Here's why you oscillate. And thank you for sharing, by the way. So if you couldn't hear, he said, I feel like I'm in it, but I oscillate in and out, right? Here's why you oscillate. We're here in our current reality. We want to get over here to our desired reality, okay? But there's actually a second tension pulling on your current reality. There's a second tension. And I want you to think about this like rubber band. There's a rubber band that has got tension around what you want to be. Okay? And that's true. And so you're in it, and you'll move towards it, but then you'll oscillate. Oscillate means one step forward, one step back. Am I just speaking to this gentleman, or is there more people, show of hands, who I'm also speaking to here? Who else oscillates? Here's why. Because you also have a second desire, which is to resolve a way that you feel incomplete. There's something that you are trying to have so then you can fully feel complete. For me, and we'll go into this today, is we a lot of us have certain things that we're trying to do. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I'm not smart enough. So instead of just having a true goal of making the money, we've also got a secondary goal in life, which is to prove ourselves or to become significant or to be unique. So there's a second goal. And what happens is, is this tension is pulling there. And so what happens is as soon as we move towards our desired result, what happens to this tension structure? This one, does this one's tension increase or decrease? As soon as you move that way, it increases, doesn't it? And what happens to this one when you move this way? What happens to the tension of the rubber band there? Decreases, so what happens? What happens? You'll take one step towards what it is you want and then you're not good enough to do this. You're not feeling this. Who are you kidding? It hasn't happened yet. Oh, that's right, I'm not complete. I'm not good enough, I'm not this. And we're gonna go into this day, so then you move towards, well, I better do a healing, or I better do this, or I better look after myself, or I better read a book, or I don't know enough, or I better go to a course. And then you move that way, and then you're like, oh, that resolved a bit of that tension, but now that one's bigger. I better go for my goal again. So then you take a step towards the goal, and then guess what happens? It's not happening. You're full of it. This ain't the right thing. It's not the right this. It's a da 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 And it comes back. Is it true? And then you go back there and back there. Hold that because that is going to be a big thing I'm going to go into in about 10 minutes. And everyone's going to be able to understand why they oscillate. Is it good? It, I guess it brings me to, to there's more energy in maintaining the self-image than there is of trusting the women so he said there's more energy in maintaining the self-image than there is in trusting. Yeah, you, you have conflicting goals and agendas. One is I have to maintain this new thing. Do you see what's the energy of I have to maintain and be in this new energy? I'm not it. Do you see? I'm not it. Hold it. It's, it's going to come clear. It's going to come clear. It's going to thank you though. See? My slides even know what's going to pop up beforehand. I've got it coming right now. I promise you the big problem is your natural conflict is going to stop you. Your natural conflict is going to stop you. You actually don't have pure and clear goals. You actually have a secondary gain. I'm going to build that big business and then they're going to think I'm awesome. I'm going to do this because then I'm going to get more love. I'm going to have the relationship, not just because I want the relationship, because it will complete me, because I don't have the love myself, you see? So there's all these things that come through us that we actually have a secondary gain. We don't just have the clear, pure goal. Does that make sense? We have these other things that are in there. And this is why the manifestation can't happen. So here's what happens. Is this good stuff, guys? Are you enjoying this? Yeah. Your past or your current reality, which is just your past, see? It's just your current reality is just made up of your past. You write on the forefront of your past. That's all a current reality is, is it's the newest part of your past, because it's always happening, true? It's always happening. So your past is just proven. What is it? It's proven. It's just proven, meaning it's survivable. 
It's survivable to be in this energy, to have this abundance, to have this stress. This is survivable, you see? So as soon as you take a step towards your future, guess what happens? Well, this is new, this is uncomfortable, and I don't like it. So what do we want to do? Go back to what's proven, you got it, who's with me? That's why we oscillate, just because this is safer. You see? So we go like this. Two says, oh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. No, you're not, no, you're not. And you make one step forward, one step back, and things don't change that much. Things don't change that much. Your actions are going to equal results, but the emotion motivates it. So you have this idea of this one here being safe. And so this here being risky or new. And because of those emotions, we're doing this. We take one step forward because we want the new, then one step back because it's risky, we want to go back to safe. Show of hands who agrees with this. Have you noticed it in your life or other people's lives? So do you guys want to do an exercise with me? Yes. Do you want to find this? Yeah. Do you want to find your two tension structures? Because I want to do it with you. Yeah. Who's up for it? It's big. <laughs> I sat here this morning and asked, I said, you know, what is it that I really want to share today? Our, our magnetic mind process, it's a year long thing and we go through everything to shift your attraction point. And I think today, I want to talk about tension structures and help you to understand it. So let's shout out a few future goals. Who wants to play full out, by the way? Nice. What's some future goals that you want to manifest or create? Go. Someone yell one out. Career of what? Mining. Mining career. Good. What else? Physical. Fitness. Fitness. Someone else? Travel. Travel. Music. Music. What else? Some more choices. I want to change people's lives. Impact. Same. Okay, so while well, the mining career, so I want everyone to do this exercise by the way. The first one is what is a future goal? Just pick one. Just pick a goal. Pick a future goal. What's that? It will never happen if you don't choose it. What's yours? Um, I don't know if I can put it into a very short sentence, but I'm setting up an organization around personal development, improving people's love life, and improving their sex life. Great. Personal development business. Yeah. Successful one. Nice. Here's the next question. Has everyone done that, by the way? Pretty simple. Choose a goal. Second question. If you had that goal right now, how would you feel? Amazing. Amazing. What's your, what's your goal? Um, impact people, personal development, yeah. Great. So I feel awesome. So I want to ask this, mining career, how would you feel if you had that right now? <laughs> Good. If you had the fitness, how would you feel? Uh, how would you feel? Amazing. <laughs> Are you sure? Not as amazing as I would be at that goal. So, well, okay, so it's not how you'd feel now, how would you feel? Um, I'd probably feel Nice. Uh, the travel, how would you feel if you were doing that? I feel alive and free. The music. How would it be? How would it be? Like, let's just. Incredible. Like, you'd really you'd feel a lot of joy, yeah? The person who wants more choices. How would it feel to have more choices? Liberating. Liberating. Nice. And the person who wants to have impact. How would it feel? Empowered. Empowered. Sorry about my handwriting. I got kicked out of high school and can't spell. So I just squiggle. <laughs> it's not because I can't spell. There's no correlation. So if that's your future goal, and did everyone do it by the way, yes? It's very important, whether you want to manifest that goal or not, it's very important to do it to understand your structure because the way you do anything is the way you do everything. So I can pick any goal and I can show you your structure. 
So if that's there, what is your reality compared to that? So instead of mining, what's the reality now? Instead of the mining job, what's the reality? Whatever that is, area manager. And how does that feel? Horrible, soul sucking. Horrible, soul sucking. Uh, the fitness compared to where you want to be and having that, what's it like now? Unfit, or not as fit. What would you call it? Um, not as fit. And how does that feel? Not Who's next? Who's next? What's the next one? Travel. So who, you want to be traveling? What's it like now instead? Instead of traveling, you are? Uh, I kind of feels like being in a straight jacket. So you're in a straight jacket. So you're kind of stuck, right? Who's next? Who's the next one on the list? Music. What is it now? So instead of having the music and creating that, what are you doing now? Scared. Scared. But and, and you're not are you not creating? I'm creating I've got my production Yep. Yeah. Scared. So that was actually making money in music. But what's that end goal? I'm confused. Because I'm ready to go to the start. Ah. Ready to go scared and confused, right? So instead of being in it, I'm stuck at the starting block. I like it, thank you, good share. And thank you those that are sharing, it helps bring so much more to, to what it is we're doing. Uh, choices, choices. Oh, that's cool, so you, instead of choices, straight jacket, yeah. Uh, impact and empowered, who is that? That's me, um, I guess I've been procrastinating because... So what did you have instead? So instead of having the impact, what do you have now? Yeah. All right. And you feel, how do you feel, sorry? Procrastination. Fear of being wrong, I guess. Fear. All right, got it. So I know that my, my writing's completely terrible. But can you see that this person here is not that person? Yes or no? Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see that the people that are reinforcing these feelings actually can never be this person. Because epigenetics says, we we're talking about DNA before, epigenetics says that the, do you guys know what epigenetics it means above the gene? Yeah. This is real science. It means that if you are literally giving a feeling to your body, if you give this feeling to your body, it comes down in a neural transmitter and it actually changes the structure of your genes, your structure of your DNA. And here's what happens. You get addicted to the feeling, biologically addicted to it. Because if for 35 years, you're giving your body, I'm scared, I'm scarce, I'm scared, I'm this, I'm procrastinating. What does your body know is safe? That addiction. That addiction. And so when you try to break it, what does it do? It tries to protect itself. It tries to protect itself. It fights it, its way back there because that's what's safe. Right? Um, I didn't call it this at all. <laughs> I'm not that smart. Epigenetics means, it all it means is above genes. Epigenetics, above genes. So what it means is, is that right now you can think of a moment that was completely satisfying. You could think of a sexual fantasy. You could think of all sorts of things. A chemical will go down to your body. That feeling will actually happen. Your body doesn't know where that feeling came from, just that it got it. True? And what happens is, is you reinforce it so much, you become addicted to it. About eight years ago, seven, seven years ago, Harriet, we were in Thailand. And I was the most pissed off, stressed out person on the beach. No one likes a stressed out, pissed off millionaire on the beach. No one likes it. But I was so outside my comfort. Guess what my comfort was? My comfort was stressed out, pissed off, going for it, taking action, busy, aggressive, not good enough. 
So then when he became wealthy and sat on the beach, guess what his body did? Like a cocaine addict, sitting on the beach in Thailand, no limits at all, guess what I'm doing? Fuck, I'm pissed off, why are we doing it? I'm not changing the world doing this, Harry. This, look at her laughing her head off at me. We're not changing, what, this is stupid, what are we even doing? I hate, I hate relax, I hate the beach. I'm not a beach person, look at me. I'm ginger, I'm just gonna burn. This is shit, that is shit, new hotel. <laughs> why? Because I'm trying to recreate it. Can I just ask, did your wife go with you on that trip? She was there, she's right there, I'm talking to her, Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> did you leave and go out somewhere else? <laughs> well, here's the thing is, she so, that was me. That was me, it was no different. Here's the point, here's the point is that you're addicted to your feelings, your way of being, true? And in order for you to create something new, you have to change that addiction. That's why every day we do a new meditation, because it can change. And I'm gonna talk about neuroplasticity today, and it can change. But it can't change if you keep reinforcing it. Who's with me on that? It can't. You can't move to here to here. You can't. But you can create all these feelings. Who can feel empowered right now if they chose to? Who could feel all these feelings, in fact, liberated, incredible, amazing, light and free? So here's one of the secrets we do, is every single day we create. We create that feeling in our body until we become addicted to it. Every day. It's a daily thing. It takes 12 weeks to create it to actually every day we have processes so that your body becomes addicted to the new way of being. And then guess what it refuses? Yeah. That. Yeah. Right? So, other than getting into the right feeling, have you guys all done this by the way? Has everyone done Point one and point two, yes? Yeah. I, hope so. I hope you've done this, it's not just the people that are working with me that you've all done. Has everyone done it? If not, catch up. Okay. So other than getting in that feeling, other than that, what is the action that you need to take? What is the action you need to take? So first person, what is the action that you need to take to go from area manager to that. What's the action, the obvious action? Uh, I've set up vision boards all around my house. So I'm my bed. You've already done that. And vision boards don't freaking work. And I've got my S11 next Thursday, Friday. But just a second, I just got to talk about that. I've been to a lot of billionaires, a lot of hundred millionaires, a lot of people that made a lot of money. And guess what I don't see on their fridge? <laughs> Fucking affirmations. Oh, no, no, no. And I want to help you. <laughs> and vision boards because it reinforces that you're not there it reinforces anyway it's another point it's not my topic for today but I'm like I'm sick of people that that haven't been able to create properly plastering stuff around and not telling the truth because guess what they really work if you're in this energy who's with me yeah. they really work if you're in that they don't work if you stay there but most people sit there feeling horrible, visioning the amazing thing, right? Reinforcing that they're not it. Anyway, what is the obvious action that you're supposed to take next? Um, we've got an induction next Thursday, Friday. So get the job. For the fitness, what's the obvious action next? The next action. Notice that we think we're already doing it. What's the next action? Because it's the truth. I'm here, I want to be here. What's the obvious next action? Fair enough. Is it, uh, I'll tell you how to find the one in a second. Who's the next one? The travel. What's the obvious next action to go from there to there? Plan a trip. Okay, good. Plan a trip. Awesome. Who's the next one? Music. What's the obvious next action to go from here to here? Find a team member. Beautiful. What's the obvious next action to go? That's a choice. Obvious next action to go to impact from, from there to impact. I'm going to finish writing my workshops. Got to finish writing my workshops. I want everyone to write down the obvious, it's important. What's the obvious next action you're supposed to take to go from where you are to where you want to be? Next action, not the ones you're already doing.
So if I've got my induction next week, then I... Okay. You have to be doing it. You have, it's not just the induction, you have to make it happen. So here's what's interesting. Is everyone doing that? What's the obvious next action? Yes? It's very important because what's coming on the next page is going to be really, really important. Is there anyone here that's got an obvious next action that they've kind of put off? Plan. Pardon? Yeah, nice. That's your obvious next action. Has anyone got an obvious next action that they've put off for a while? They know they should have been doing, but they just haven't done it. Is there anyone that's supposed to do anyone like that at all? Yeah, right. What about the rest of you? Why are you not? Why is, what's your reason for not doing it? You ready for it? Because even if you're in it, you could have done it a long time ago. Is it true? You ready for it? The first question. What are your reservations or stories that stop you from taking that action? Write them down, yell them out. What are some of your stories or reservations that stop you? Imposter syndrome. I don't think I'm good enough, what else? I can't work in a man's world. I can't work in a man's world, Got to, I'm not good enough, I can't do it. What else, what, is, what are the other reservations you have? Let's go, yeah. I've, I'm no, I don't have the capability to work with computers. Yeah, what else? What are some other reservations you have about that? I don't deserve it bigger than you. Nice, what else? Money. I don't have enough money. No, it's not that I don't have enough money, I just don't want to, I can't charge people for doing something I do all the time for nothing. Nice, nice. I can never charge people for stuff that I've already done for free. Nice. But it's all good, just write it down. You're going to find it. It's in, in a, there's no judgment, it's just we all have really messed up things like this that stop us. Right? Anyone else got a fun one? Next question, this is going to be huge. What are your judgments of yourself or others when it comes to taking this next step? What are your judgments of yourself or others when it comes to taking this next step? Let's hear it. How do you judge yourself? I already heard a couple pop out already. I'm happy with myself when I do it. Pardon? I'm happy with myself when I do it. How's that a judgment? It's not a judgment. It's just so I'm asking for judgments. <laughs> Pardon? You can say it's a positive judgment. Great. So, so I'm looking for judgments right now. So it's a, I'm judging myself positively. I understood. It took me a while. What are the judgments? I'm just in it for the money. I'm just in it for the money. So it's bad to have just money. What else? Fear of failure is a big one. Fear of failure. I, I might fail and failure is bad. We're judging failure as a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm what else? Value, I'm, not value, I'm not valued enough. Not worthy. I'm not worthy enough. So I'm not good enough, worthy yeah. enough to have it. Yeah, nice. What else? It's sort of along the same lines, but other people miss out. Other people have to miss out if I have this. Yeah, right. That's a big one. Let's go on. What about, what are your inner conflicts? What are your inner conflicts when it comes to this? How are you conflicted about taking this action? Because the question is, why wouldn't you have already done it? Why wouldn't you have already had it? Why over the 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years you've been on the planet, why have you not already done it? Like, what, what's the inner conflicts about this? I don't want to take someone else's money. Write it down. I've, in case I'm not good enough or... Yeah, something. good. Write it down. I can't help them. What else? Yeah, um, you sort of, like, you're sort of just chasing your own uh, dream, like as a father, ah, possible your wife, kids. I should be doing it, yeah, I get it. So here's the big question. You ready for it? Instead of doing the thing you're supposed to do, how do you resolve the tension? So you avoid it. Instead of doing what you're supposed to do, how do you resolve this tension? Oh, I'm going to lose people's money. So how do you resolve it? Oh, I'm scared of failure. How do you resolve it? Because you can't live walking around scared of failure. So what do you do to resolve it? Let me, this is big, by the way. I told you I was going to go up the deep end. What do you do to resolve it? Tell myself that it's okay. Excuses. Excuses. So some people do excuses. Good. How, what do you do? Is anyone like me? You just get pissed off at yourself and work harder. What else? How do you resolve 
all of these because you can't live with all of these so what do you do to stop it who just goes and does more courses and reads more books yeah. who thinks that there's something wrong with them and goes and finds a healer yeah. <laughs> right right who has to tell all their friends about it and has to find find others who aren't doing good who does that who changes what they were going for Oh, I didn't want that anyway who just plans and plans and plans and plans and plans and never just does it? Right? Notice that we have to resolve the tension. And this is what's interesting is because, and this is why I told you you were going to get it, is we have this other thing that we start doing. You see? So instead of taking the obvious next action, instead we're taking another action to resolve a way that we feel incomplete. Some of us say, I'm scared of failure. I can never fail because I know someone over here said it. I'm scared of it because failure would mean that I wasn't viable. So instead of going for what I want, I'm going to try to resolve and never fail. You see? Some people say that I don't want to do this or I don't want to do that. I can't do. Some people say I'm not capable. So here's what's interesting. Here's what's interesting. Every single one of us has one of six core sabotaging identities that are taking us to here. One of six core sabotaging identities that are taking us here. Do you guys want to hear them? Because when you get this awareness, you'll stop trying to resolve it and you'll be able to actually create with the right tension structure. Yeah. Who would like to hear them? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah. The first one is I'm unworthy. This person never feels like they're good enough to have what they want. So instead of having what they want, they do stuff to prove their worth. I'll do it for free because I'm not worthy to get paid for it. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'm unworthy. So instead of going for what they want, they try to resolve that identity. The second one, I'm not good enough to have what I want. So instead of, so I'm not worthy, I better look after my family because I'm, it's not worthy for me just to have what I desire. You see? So I'm going to take this. Or I'm not good enough. A lot of people here say, well, I'm not good enough to have what I desire. So instead, they're going to study and read books and go to courses and all these things rather than just doing what they want. Does this make sense? Yes. The next one is I don't belong. This person, instead of taking action and doing what they want to do, they will do everything to make sure they're not judged or criticized by their friends. They will never find a way to not belong. They always have to do things that belong. So if they start doing something and a family member says it's bad, that can't be true. If they start doing something and their friends don't like it, they have to stay in belonging. Does that make sense? They won't go and just be them. Say if they want to go start a new career or do a new thing, but their friends don't want, they won't go. They have to belong. The next one is, I'm insignificant, I'm invisible. This person won't go for what they want unless they get to be the one that's visible, significant, the star, the one that everyone says is good. They get validation. They can't just go and have what they want. See, maybe they want to make millions and millions of dollars, but by doing that, it's a way that they wouldn't be significant. The next is a big one, because it's mine. I don't have the capacity. I'm always fighting. I don't have the I can't do that. I'm going to be overwhelmed. I can't do that. It's going to be too much. I can't do that. I've got to learn this. I'm not good enough to do that. I, need, I don't know enough. I don't know enough. I'm always, I even told you guys about it up here, right? Can't spell that good. Didn't finish high school. I don't know enough. I don't know enough. I constantly have that. Does that make sense? And I know it, so I don't go and try to resolve it because it keeps me in the old identity. And the last one is I have to be perfect. I can't get things wrong. I can't get things wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so I think most people are all six. In different situations, true? Who got some awareness from that? Show of hands. Because you can't create with that structure. You can't create with that structure. Does that make sense? You cannot create what you desire and at the same time 
trying to be solving one of these limiting identities. Is it true? You can't. You can't. And that's why most of the courses, books, anything that you try to achieve won't happen because the identity won't let you have it. True? It's the biggest thing. The identity will stop you. And so you have to ask yourself, where is the power? 99% of people's power is in the current identity. That's where all the power is. How do you know it has the power? Let's see if anyone can guess. How do you know if the power is in the true end result or if the power is in resolving the identity? How do you know? The action, yes. See, the big creators on this planet, the ones that just go for it, think about Michael Jordan, think about Michael Jackson, think about Beyonce, think about Lady Gaga, JK Rowling, think about the people that just create. They just create. They just go and have what they want. Make sense? Do you think along the way a lot of this came in, but they had to just go for it? With that there. Bless you. So, this is the reason, but here's the mistakes that people make. It's my last piece that I want to go through before we have a break. Is everyone okay for another 10 minutes? You guys enjoying tonight, by the way? Yeah, is it, is it a lot more than you thought about coming to a free course, free seminar? I hope so, because I just wanted to, to go through a lot, okay? So, oops, is that the same slide? Same slide, but it moved an inch. Look at that. Whoa. The first big mistake is that people are not clear on what they really want. They're only clear on what they don't want. Big mistake. Anyone like that? They actually struggle to come up with this. I think someone over here said, hey, I don't really know. Anyone, anyone got to the place where they've just given up on setting big goals? A lot of people have. They've just stopped wanting to create because it's painful because it reminds them they don't have it. Can I ask, like, what if you just are like, so confused that you just have like, so many or you've been younger as well? It's like an overwhelming feeling of just not knowing what to do. So what if you're overwhelmed, there's so many things to do? I would first let you know that you're coming from that identity and same. All right? The, the fear of trying to make the right decision is what's stopping you. And the truth is, you know the true one that you want. You do. Look at that. So she's like, yeah, I do. That's it. Done. Choose that. Anything else is trying to live. Good for you. Just choose that. Whatever that was, right? Do that and don't listen to what others. Don't try to move that way. Just choose that. And hold that tension. Good for you. That's the first big mistake. Is not just owning and being clear on your truth. What you truly want. What you truly want. Like I truly want to have a highly successful, lucrative personal development business. Right? I'm just saying that's my truth. That's what I want. A lot of us can't just say what we want. It has to come with all sorts of other things. But just owning it. <laughs> the second big mistake is trying to heal the current identity. Trying to heal it. Who are my people that have tried to heal their current identity? You, you know, you normally have gone to course after course. You keep trying to heal it and I see them. After I went to two NLP certifications, an EFT certification, Reiki, uh, Manifesting All Possibilities, Matrix Energetics, I started seeing that the same people were at each one. They were. And then they'd even have communities and they'd talk about the next personal development seminar they're going to go to. And they even have beliefs. They say, well, you've got to work on yourself before you can achieve. <laughs> but it's true. You can't. You cannot create this reality while trying to fix this one. You can't, you can't. And I know everyone goes, whatever, 
you know, I'm a, I'm a hypnotherapist, I'm a this, I'm a that. Yes, you can. No, nope. even look at the people that are teaching it. They don't have the successful businesses and relationships they say they do. They're so convinced that they have to heal their current. They have to heal this and they're going to figure it all out. And finally, they're going to feel worthy. And then their dream life will show up. And it's just not true. It's just not true. Sure, you can, you can take the edge off things, but never from that reality, never from here. You can't heal from here. Do you guys want to know the difference? Because healing's great. I do a lot of it for people. Do you guys want to know the difference? Yes. You must, do you? Yeah. You must be here. You must be living in this, taking the action from the future, and then when things come up, healing with them, dealing with them. Does that make sense? You can't sit back here going, I want to start a business, I want to have a business, I want to have a business, but I need to heal my self-worth and my fear of this and this and this. And then a trainer comes in like me and says, how many sales calls have you made this week? Well, I haven't made any sales calls yet this week because I'm dealing with my fears and my unconscious and my this and this and this. <laughs> True? What about the person going, I have to find self, I have to deal with myself, I have to get in love, I want to have a relationship, so I'm going to look after all my baggage and all my fears over here. Well, how many dates have you had this week? <laughs> well, none, because I've got stuff to da 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 and they're trying to heal it here. Does that make sense? You cannot heal from there and suddenly get to this person that has everything you want. It's a massive, massive, massive mistake. Massive mistake. How do you know you're in this reality? The action you're taking. All alchemists will tell you everything's created twice, same above, so below. The true, true alchemy will let you know that it takes will and takes action. Mistake number three, problem solving. Problem solving. I will explain it. Problem solving. The artist doesn't solve a problem when he or she creates a beautiful painting. The musician doesn't solve a problem when they create a massive, awesome, amazing piece of music. The billionaires on the planet weren't solving problems. Walt Disney didn't solve a problem. They didn't solve problems, they created. Everyone can see the complete difference between the two, right? Mm. Steve Jobs put a thousand songs in our pocket. We weren't walking around in the 90s going, gosh, I've got no songs in my pocket. We were fine, weren't we? We were fine. We had CDs, we had tapes, we had cassettes. We were fine. We had our thing. Do you guys remember those things that used to go on the visors and you'd have all the... We were fine. <laughs> I wonder where all the CDs and cassettes and records are hanging out, by the way, right? But, but we didn't have a problem. Most of us are seeing problems in our life and then trying to create to get rid of them. That will never work. That will never work because which identity are you in when you're trying to solve a problem? It's right, you're here. You're trying to solve this. You're trying to solve the problem of, you know, wherever it is, I'm trying to solve the problem of uh, you know, all of these here, where I'm, I'm in a straitjacket, or I feel fear, I feel this, I'm trying to solve that. You can't solve that problem, you've got to let it go. What if it's not your problem, it's a marketplace problem? You can't solve a problem, we create a business, I'm not talking about creating a business. Okay. That's about creating a business that you love. Yeah. That's about creating a business that you love. The reason why most people's businesses don't work, by the way, is they think it's going to be better than a job. Hear me out on this. They think, job, constraints, suck, crappy boss. Yeah, that's the thing I'm going to have. I'm going to have control and freedom. And then they get over here and they're like, oh shoot, now I've got to deliver it, be the salesperson, the marketer, pay the tax. Now I'm the crappy boss of myself and I'm making less money and I'm more stressed. Why did that happen? Because they were trying to solve a problem. It doesn't work. You have to put the current reality. Do you get it now? Number four, you haven't shifted the core beliefs and you're just trying to work harder. You're just trying to work harder. It's like putting clean water in a dirty fishbowl. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. You can't stay over there and create this. You guys get in the point of tonight. You can't stay there and create this. Doesn't work. They're separate people. Who's with me on that?
You just can't. You've got to live from here. If you want to have choice and travel and freedom and abundance and impact and to feel those feelings and feel empowered, you've got to be it now. And you can. And only by being it and taking the action from it can it show up. It's the biggest misconception. The biggest misconception when it comes to creating what you want is that you create it from where you are and that you have to have something, which is the next one, thinking something external will change you. Thinking something external will change you. At the beginning when I said if you had a million dollars handed to you in a box, most of you said, yeah, that'd be great, right? You think something external will change the internal. You can see the people that wrote up here, this is different to their current reality, true? So they think by having these things, they'll be different. But we now know that that won't happen. They'll just have these things and it will still feel, even though now it's, it's that great mining job is the thing that's going to change me, promise you, you'll get it, they'll become familiar, and then very, very quickly, it will start feel like that, soul-sucking, it will. I know people that tell me all the time that mining soul-sucking and horrible. But I bet you when they went for it, it wasn't, true? Here's what you got to remember with this one. And by the way, I'm just being truthful, it's, you know, you guys should all just create what you love, but I just want to tell you all truth. Is that okay? Yeah. Wherever you go, there you are. Right? And I, this was the biggest thing that hit me. I made all the money, got the beautiful, amazing wife, the, you know, the house of the Gold Coast, the freedom, the busy, everything else. And then I went like, exactly the same. I'm exactly the same with a nicer car and now a tennis coach and a personal trainer and a this and all these other things. But I'm exactly the freaking same. And I realized when I really created the success that it was already there. This is a massive mistake that I want you to take away from today. You cannot plant seeds of doubt and grow a confidence tree. You cannot plant seeds of scarcity and grow an abundance tree. It's literally impossible. You cannot plant seeds of, I'm in a straitjacket, I'm scared, I'm a procrastinator, I'm in fear. I'm not comfortable, it's horrible. You cannot plant these seeds and grow this. Can't happen. Can't happen. One thing that a lot of people plant by their action, which is, I believe, the last one. Yeah. Good slides. What a lot of people do with their actions is they actually sabotage everything. Here's my question from you, for you right now. In any moment, there's one big question what is my subconscious getting from my actions? What is my subconscious getting from my actions? So think about that. I'll, I'll help you for a second. You want to do this thing, but then you're procrastinating. True? So by wanting to do something but procrastinating, what is your subconscious getting from that non-action, which is actually an action? That you're not ready. That you're not ready. Thank you, thank you so much. So then I'm not ready. So then I'm reinforcing and growing the I'm not ready tree, trying to work on myself to be ready, which is actually an underlying identity that I'm not worthy, you see? And that's why it's not manifesting. Not because of desire or because of your talent or anything else, it's because of that. Does that make sense? The question you've got to ask yourself always, what is my subconscious getting from the actions I'm taking? True? Because if you're saying, I'm an author, or I'm a speaker, or I'm confident, or I'm an artist, or I'm a this, and then you're not doing it, instantly you're not it. True? It's one of the biggest mistakes is we forget that we can't hide from ourselves. Right? Uh, when I'm sitting down, I tell this better. But you can be sitting down, and you can be like, I'm a standing up person. I'm a standing up person. I dream I'm a standing up person. I'm getting ready to be a standing up person. I'm a standing up person. My dream is to be standing up. But you stay sitting down. What is the subconscious actually getting from a person who does that? That you're not serious, right? It's just one of those things that you think about. It was nice to have. So those are the big mistakes. 
So guys, have, has it been a good first sort of session? Everyone excited about it? Yeah. Time for a quick comfort break? Yeah. yeah? So before we have a quick break, can I ask, I want to get a few shares from you guys. I love the interaction. That's why I love small rooms like this. What have been two or three big things that you've learned from today? I'd love to hear from a few people, so be fast if you really need to go to the bathroom so we can make this happen quick. What are some things you've really enjoyed that you want to take away? Yes? I've done every bloody course you could know. You've done every course you could know? Every fucking course under the fucking sun, right? I'm still bloody sane. Stop doing the courses. I, I love myself more, I've got to be honest, I do, through doing them. Through doing Sounds like you do. And, but I actually still hate that other aspect of me. Sorry. That, I hate that other aspect. And thank you for being so honest and, and it's really important to understand that there's some, there's a different way and it, it, you can't change it. So thank you, good share. I've done all those things, you've done up that, almost, almost, all those things that you listen to. Well, it's not a competition. Maybe, <laughs> no, 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 probably not as well as you, but the most of those things... Probably have, have done them well. Dropped, I think. That's, good. That's what, that's, that's, so thank you. You're welcome. Who else wants to share? Yes. The, the tension, the oh, instruction thing. Ah, tension seeking resolution structure. Path of least resistance. I love it. Thank you. Who else wants to share? Yeah. Um, I think I learned that the truth is I'm afraid to change who my current identity is. Good truth, man. I'm afraid to change who my current identity is. And we all are. We all are. In order to be that world class presenter impacting millions, you have to. Stop being you. Here's a question I have for all of you. Are you willing to give up who you've been in order to step into who you're becoming? But quite literally, quite literally. Are you willing to give up who you've been in order to step into who you're becoming? I've been using a method where I've been sabotaging my comfort zone. So I'm so uncomfortable that I have to change. It, won't, it just won't work for you. you, you will oscillate. He said he's been making it so uncomfortable where I am now, so I have to change. You're reinforcing that you're not it. You're trying to solve this. We, well, I'll do some questions in a second. Just to add to that though, mm. going back on all those other courses, like you said, a lot of those courses though, to tell you in order to move forward to be the, the cause of your effect, blah, 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 is that you have to be in an uncomfortable position. It's crap. You know, so yeah. what you're saying is like it's completely crap. opposite. So I get what you're saying that, because they say you have to heal yourself in order to go and- you know, I know they say that. I know they say that, so thank you and thank you. But let's not bash on them, they're doing the best that they can. But it's true, and the truth is, is that you are told that you're supposed to heal your current reality and that, but it just reinforces that you're not it. It just reinforces that you're not it and that means that you're separate from it and that you have to do something to complete yourself to have it and it's why manifestation, the secret, all these things will not work. They will not work. So you just go for it and just do it and just be it. You must understand how to change it through an epigenetic procedure that helps you to reinforce who you are and be this because the one thing you can be now is the feeling. The one thing you have control over is the feeling. True? We can all change. We all have complete control over our feeling. We can close our eyes and think of that sexual fan. No, don't think of that. <laughs> but things will change inside of you. True? One more share, then we'll have a quick break. Problem solving creating is different. Problem solving creating is different. And yes? I love the meditation that you sent. Oh. Thank you. Yes, very actually, great. yeah. Who else liked the meditation? Yes. Very, very you all got sent a meditation if you haven't done it yet. Why not? <laughs> All right, so the time is about eight. What's the time? Ten past eight. Ten past eight? Yeah. So after the, the break, uh, I'm going to, we're going to do a little bit more. We're going to do a closed eye meditation. It's going to be fun. It's going to be cool. And then I will be talking a little bit about the program and stuff like that. So five minutes, ten minutes. Should we be back at 20 past? Yep. Yeah. 20 past sounds good. Yep. Awesome. We'll carry on then.